and that. Both these teams shorthanded tonight. We'll get to that in just a moment. But when you think of the Missouri Valley Conference, Nothing is more synonymous to the term rivalry than Bradley versus Illinois State. That's right. It's the I-74 rivalry. Great opportunity for both of these two teams to get some momentum going to the end of this regular season, going into Mar March Madness, and try to get some momentum going into that big tournament. Yeah, you see the standings right there. Both teams jockeying for position. Two weeks from tonight, we'll start March Madness in St. Louis. So for Bradley tonight, no Elijah Childs, no Terry Nolan Jr., no Danye Kingsby for Illinois State they're without their top scorer DJ Horn with that said who are we focusing on tonight yeah for, for ISU it's Josiah Strong he's a junior he, he transferred into ISU this year he's one of their vocal leaders really good player he, he's got a, a leadership qualities and, and what he really brings is scoring off the bench for the most part 11.6 points per game for him and so he really brings kind of a, an energy to the Redwood program and for Bradley, uh, Rink Mass has been on fire. He has been Brad, uh, one of Bradley's best players recently. The last seven games, he's averaging just under 12 points per game, and he can stretch the floor from behind the arc, and really just with every game, improving Rink Mass, one of the guys to focus on tonight. Well, Matt, we're about ready to get started. Both teams taking the floor quickly. Let's go over the starting lineups first for the visiting Redbirds. You just heard about Josiah Strong. Believe it or not, this is actually going to be his first start of the year. He plays starters minutes, but first time he'll start from the opening tip. Howard Fleming Jr., Iman Washington, a couple of really strong freshmen, Antonio Reeves out of Chicago, and Dushan Mahorchic will round it out for the Redbirds. Bradley, on the other hand, they'll run up another freshman in Jason Kent. Kevin Kevin McAdoo in his six games back from his leave of absence. Ja'Shawn Henry, he's back after missing the last two games, making his second start of the year. Vile Tavanainen and Rink Mast will round it out for the Braves. The 132nd all-time matchup between these two programs is underway as the Braves control the tip. Brian, the I-74 rivalry. Going to see a lot of intensity between these two teams. Let's see how this opening segment falls. The Braves have won five of six in this series, but fell in their most recent one in Bloomington Normal, 71 to 56, the final in that one back on January the 20th. Henry keeping it alive, but stepped on the baseline and it'll go back to Illinois State on the opening possession. Great first defensive possession there for the Redbirds. You're seeing that they play the two, three zones, gonna throw Bradley off all night. We get to the keys of the game for ISU. Sharing is caring. When they're successful, they're sharing the ball well. Teammates are getting open shots, extra passes, and then playing with fire. Uh, the, the first meeting of the season, ISU came out, had a lot of intensity. That second half, they came out and beat the Braves, and that was a big key for them. We'll get to Bradley's keys in just a moment here, Brian. Mahorchich being guarded by Mast. Here is Fleming Jr. Outside, three is down from Antonio Reeves, the sophomore out of Simeon High School, part of the MVC All Bench team a year ago. And that's something Illinois State did a lot of in the second half in their win against the Braves in January. Yeah, making threes, and that's one of the keys for Bradley is guarding that three-point line. ISU, when they're successful, they're making a lot of threes, and uh, you know ISU's gonna wanna do that. For Bradley, their other key then as well, it'll be payback. You know, they remember that first matchup. Coach Wordle talked about it during the middle of the week, saying, hey, our guys want to come out. They got some fire. They want to come out and, and get some payback from that first loss against their rival, ISU Redbirds. Here is Strong from deep, and that's good. And the Redbirds are two of two from deep. And Josiah Strong, who was the only player that was in double figures in both games against Southern last weekend, gets off on the right foot with a three. Yeah, and this is a perfect start for Dan Muller and the Birds just coming out, get two defensive stops. This 2-3 zone can really wreak havoc against opponents. They're long. They kind of do a 2-3 little matchup zone, as, as you see Henry get the post feed. And he goes up, and he's too strong with it, and the rebound to Fleming. If you recall in the game, the first matchup, the Braves actually got off to a great start against that zone as Mahorchich on the pick and roll slams it down. And Illinois State off to a perfect start, 8-0. Again, it's almost the exact opposite of what reversed. we saw 39 miles away about a month ago where Bradley got out to a 16-4 lead, and then it was pretty much Illinois State 
from there on out, but let's see how Bradley responds out of the timeout. Yeah, I mean, just almost a perfect start. You couldn't ride it up any better if you're Dan Muller. For, for Brian Wardle right now, it's, guys, come on, wake up. The, the ISU is taking it to us right now. You see Mohorkic get free off that little screen and roll down the lane for the one-handed slam. And, I mean, that's just going to get your program fired up if you're ISU right now playing with a lot of moxie coming out here with some swagger. Punched Bradley in the mouth here the first two minutes and 15 seconds. Let's see what the Braves can come up with an answer or not. And again, as we've said at the top, both teams playing shorthanded. Uh, Childs, Kingsby, and Nolan uh, all suspended for uh, all basketball-related activities due to program violations. Just Hannah Henry back in, as we said. DJ Horn, uh, who was a monster in that first game, is out for Illinois State due to injury tonight. The Braves break the press with ease. McAdoo who's averaging eight points per game and two assists since his return to the lineup gives to Tabanina. Bounce pass to Henry on the low block. Pivots in and goes up and scores, and you love to see that for Deshaun Henry, who gets the Braves on the board. Yeah, really strong move there by Henry. As you see kind of in the middle of the zone there, ISU, they got two guys on him, a third one coming in and sagging in. Just a better, better move there by Henry. Great offense, beats the good defense. And you love to see that right out of the timeout. You get a high percentage look, right, if you're Bradley. Absolutely. Three in the corner is down once again. Antonio Reeves. And again, it's Reeves. That's his second triple. Illinois State, a perfect four of four from the floor and three of three from deep. Yeah, and that's one of those keys to the game that Bradley's got to have, be aware where those shooters are and kind of challenge those shots. Don't allow them to have good looks. So far, ISU's three threes have been very clean looks. Brian World's going to want that to change. McAdoo behind the back, kicks it out to Henry, puts it on the floor, steps into a deuce, and is way too strong. Kent sticks with it, back to Henry, who throws it down. Uh, did he get it clock. off? No, nope. he did not. Yeah, it looks like they might take a look at it here, but it appeared that Henry still had it in his hands on his way up for the dunk as the shot clock expired from our vantage point. Another great defensive possession there by ISU, though. And Illinois State came in shooting 36% for three. That's right in the middle of the conference, but off to a dynamite start so far tonight from, from distance. Reeves himself at 32% coming in. He's made both. I mean, they shoot 36% on the season, but that does not shy them away from shooting the three ball. Absolutely not. I mean, this is a team that's averaging 22 three-point attempts per game, so they're going to come out and shoot it. And obviously, DJ Horn is like one of those guys that, that is their catalyst from behind the three-point line. He's ninth in the NCAA you know, among all three-point shooters in terms of how many they shoot and percentage, but you don't have him tonight. It hasn't affected them yet so far. Out of the timeout, let's see what the Redbirds do. Strong guarded by Sean East, and that's the first miss of the ball game for Illinois State. And a well-contested shot there on that one. That's much more what Bradley wants. A quick shot from Strong with a hand in his face. McAdoo, hesitation, looking for Mass, couldn't get it to him. Great on hustle. the floor, behind the back to Kent to keep it alive for the Braves. Fires it over to Mass, back to East, and the Braves will reset. Henry had his corner three blocked by Reeves, and the Braves will have it. Out of the timeout in a very fast-paced opening four minutes in 13 seconds. Seven on the shot clock for Bradley. Brian Beto, Matt McLean back with you in Peoria. And we said this earlier, the 132nd meeting all-time between these two schools. Bradley with a slight edge overall. They've been pretty dominant. In Peoria, and as we said earlier, uh, Matt uh, Bradley had their five-game winning streak snapped against ISU with a 15-point Redbird win. But this is so cliche, but it is totally one of those throw out the record books when these two teams play. There's always just a ton of energy when they two when these two match up. Yeah, no doubt about it, as if you need any extra motivation. But uh, tonight's edition, especially with Bradley missing three of their top players, ISU's without its leading score. So it is one of those, all right, you're going out there and you're playing for the team that's on the front of your jersey. You're playing for that school pride. And, and most importantly, come out and get a win uh, at near the end of the season. Just try to get some momentum and, and some confidence going into Arch Madness, right? Absolutely. McAdoo is forced to launch. 
as the shot clock was expiring, tiptoeing and saving it inbounds is Fleming Jr. Hurdy has three assists in this ball game. A really good facilitator. You'll see ISU run a lot of their offense through Fleming. He's one of those guys who's got great floor vision. He can really, you see right here, mid-range jumper. He's got that in his bag of trips as well. Hit on the arm by Kent. Yeah, Fleming had seven points, four rebounds, and four assists in the first matchup. He had six assists. And ISU's dominant win in Carbondale last Saturday, 80 to 55. They won that in game one before falling by 10 in game two. Bradley was swept at Missouri State as Fleming makes the first. Freshman out of Louisville. Tavanine and checks in for Kent. You said the key word. What I was going to transition to right there, Brian, was a freshman. This is a very young, inexperienced ISU team that's a got a great job this season coming and just trying to build up some momentum and some team chemistry. I mean, this Redbirds program has zero seniors on it. I mean, only a couple juniors and, you know, really just kind of working up and building up to something. And, you know, ISU right now, they're trying to build up on that, off of that win on Saturday at Southern. Uh, they fell a little bit short Sunday, but it was a promising start on the, that road trip for sure. Are you going to look at Brian Wardle in his sixth year? They've cut down the nets the last two years. They've cut down the nets in 40% of the years he's been here at Bradley, talking about down in St. Louis. Good percentage. Not bad at all. And Dan Muller, on the other hand, leading Illinois State. You talked about this young group. He's in his eighth season. Of course, led the Redbirds the share of the 2017 Valley title. Also led them as a player to a Valley title in the late 90s as well. Was under... Kevin Stallings at Vanderbilt, another ISU guy prior to coming back to ISU. As McAdoo brings it up, Sean East to a 13 on Sunday, including three of four from three. Gives to McAdoo, flashing up on the high post is Mass. Quick touch out to East. He's been hopped from there, and that continues with a right wing three. Yeah, absolutely. East had a, he missed three games due to a non COVID illness a couple weeks ago, but he's back. And since he's returned, Brian, as you mentioned, he has been very solid, mostly coming off of the bench and providing a good spark for the Braves. He knocks down the three there. Bradley picking up the intensity defensively. Deep in the shot clock go the Redbirds. Corner three from Reeves. This time is off the mark. Mass coming off a double-double. Secures the rebound up ahead to McAdoo. Thought about a three. And the Braves recognize they need to do a better job of attacking this zone. That was something Brian Wardle talked about to the media in his Zoom call. Tava nine and sidesteps into a three. And it's chased down by Boyd. Good look there by Vile, just not able to connect on it, but you're going to need a big performance from him tonight. Vile is one of those key players for Bradley. When he's able to score 10 points, Bradley has a very good record. And Tabanainen, that's something with some players out he's been tasked to do, has been being able to guard some of the difficult uh, matchups for him. Some of the top scorers and players on the opposition as Fleming tries a three. That's off the mark. Hannah with an excellent job of sealing his defender. Forced that over the back and the Braves will have it. It's going to go on Aruna Sissoko who checked in as well. Henry back in for Bradley. And Matt, we've talked a lot about Illinois State's youth. Uh, Quite a bit out there for Bradley as well. It just seems like they're vets at this point in the season. But right now you have East, a sophomore, Hannah, a freshman, Tavanine, and a sophomore, McAdoo, and, and Henry in there too. You saw Mast, who just checked out, as McAdoo Ooh. is fouled on his way in. Yeah, strong take there by Kevin McAdoo, just realizing the, the weakness of that zone there right in the middle, drives down Main Street, gets the contact, can't get to go, but earns a trip to the charity stripe. <laughs> So McAdoo, in a short sample, has been very good from the line. 10 of 11. Had 13 points on Sunday. The Rays have been very balanced over the last few games. They've had eight players tally double figures in the last three ball games. They had six alone in the win at Valpo last Wednesday. That's the most they've had hit double digits going back to 2006. 
another pretty good year in Bradley program history. Strong to bring it up. Boyd, looking back door, cut off by Tabanainen. Stepping out is Jai, guarded by Hannah. Spins, goes baseline. Good alley drill by Hannah. Excellent defense. Yeah, absolutely. And a force to miss shot. Antonio Thomas, the sophomore out of Memphis, gives to a slashing Henry and one. Yeah, great job there by Henry just to realize he had Jai going backwards, kind of backpedaling, just takes the advantage, goes right into him, strong contact, and lays it off the glass for the and one. Henry now with two points. Beg your pardon, four points. Acrobatic finish by the junior out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And he does convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. That was his team-leading 74th free throw attempt wow. on the year. He does not shy away from contact. No, no, not at all. You see right there, he, he goes and he finds the contact. Just another example of that right there. Great heads-up play by Deshaun Henry. Fleming, the step back is good, and that's pure from the freshman. Yep, and that's one of his sweet spots, that little mid-range. We saw it earlier, draw the contact, and on that one, a little step back, 15-footer, finds nothing but net. You see a lot of this in this 2-3 zone. ISU kind of does a little matchup, and they'll do a lot of switches. Even though it's a zone, they kind of they match up a little bit, and that focus, it allows the defense to kind of breathe, and the offense has to kind of, you know, readjust and think they have an opening. But right there, it looked like they had an opening going back door, just the switch, and they get the foul. Jason Kent back in, he'll inbound. Another freshman. Sound like a broken record already with that. East on the right wing. The baseline cutter is Kent instead of the high flashers. Henry draws the double team. Had it poked away. Fleming has it, and he'll bring it up. Fleming opposite the ball screen. Jump stop, steps back again. This time a no-go. Thomas hands to East, cut off by Fleming, and checked from behind. And that'll be the fifth team foul already on the Redbirds. So Bradley will have it out of the timeout. 11.55 to go. It's the Redbirds by five. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. With Matt McLean, I am Brian Beto back here in Peoria. And before planning your trip to St. Louis or to follow the 2021 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Championship, which is just two weeks away exactly from tonight, be sure to download the Arch Madness app or visit archmadness.com. Both resources have all the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Log on to archmadness.com or download the app on your phone today. Illinois State leading Bradley 15 to 10. If you're just joining us, the Redbirds got off to a great start. But ever since, pretty good response by the Braves, Matt. Yeah, good response from Bradley, you know, trying to keep this thing close early and doing a good job of uh, attacking the rim. We've seen a, a bucket from Deshaun Henry driving. We've seen a bucket from Kev, um, Sean East driving. So a uh, good job just Bradley trying to, to stay in this one early and responding to that quick early 8-2 run from the Redbirds. Uh, the Redbirds made their first four shots, including three from three. Or just one of their last six is Henry on the reverse. No, follows his own shot and scores. So strong down there. There it is again. Bradley attacking the rim. Henry able to drive baseline, beat his defender, miss, but stick with the play. And so good when he gets that close, Brian. And so efficient. Look at some of the analytics. Him, Mast, and Tavaninen for Bradley. Really efficient offensively, and it's just been showing for Henry this year. Easton transition. Kent is a sharpshooter, and he can't knock that one down. And the rebound goes to Washington up ahead to Strong. Bradley back defensively. Boyd gets a step. Late whistle, and a foul is called, and Boyd will shoot two. Yeah, part of the scouting report on Boyd is he's such a good three-point shooter from the outside, but right there he gives us a little shot fake. He's able to drive, get past his man, and draw the contact, earn the trip to the free throw line. A Boyd who actually started his career at Eastern Kentucky, averaging just over seven points per game. 
did had 11 in the win over IS or SIU, excuse me, last weekend. Redbirds as a team, this has not been their best area, just 63%. But Boyd does make a pair. And now we'll pick up some pressure here in the backcourt. Yeah, we've seen it a number of times from IS units really just getting rid of some of that time on the shot clock. And they do a good job. They manufacture another turnover. ISU's doing a great job defensively, kind of dictating what they want to see from the Braves. And that's the idea, right? You're not there to get a steal in the backcourt, but you want to speed up the opposition. And they were able to do exactly that. As Thomas will bring it up, it's the high ball screen. Tavanonen's open for three. And yeah. Washington's there. A defensive lapse there by the Redbirds, but Tavanonen not able to connect on that open three ball. He's going to make a, a good portion, a high portion of those open looks. Ice, you got away with one there. Hannah able to save it in. Ahead to Thomas. He'll push it up the floor. He's got space, gives to Mast underneath. And he can't finish at the rim in the rebound to Morchic. Nice job there by Thomas to kind of come down and manufacture an opportunity for his teammate. But then again, you know, Mass not able to finish from about three feet out. Another good opportunity for Bradley to get this down to a one possession game. Helped out by Mast. Reeves gets space and look at the burst. Yeah, great clear out there by Mohor just to clear out Mass, not allow the help side defense to get over. Really easy done there by Reeves, just blind and produced. Kept alive by Mass out to Tavanine and thought about a three. Braves with 15 to shoot. Left wing, Thomas. To Hannah who oh, traveled. Yeah. That's one of the weak spots in that zone, though. If they can get the ball to the middle, that 2-3, and kind of facilitate right there. It looked like Henry, or um, pardon me, Hannah, had, if he wanted the little 14-foot jumper, he had it, but just kind of thinking, doing too much before he takes a dribble, and another turnover for the Braves. That's their fifth already of the evening. Jai popping out is Washington. Strong has it back to Boyd, cut off by Tavaninen. Boyd floats one up, spins out. Boyd on the ground. The Braves got numbers if they push it. Thomas to a trailing Tavaninen in the wing corner for East. Drives in, and it's poked and stolen away on the floor. Hannah has it, but oh, throws wow. it right to Strong, who's got space. Strong throws it down. Now, whole sequence starts when Abdu Jai dives on the floor, gets the loose ball, and then it gets kicked out to Strong, who kind of reads that bounce, goes the other way. ISU looking impressive so far in this opening first 11 minutes. East, they go underneath the screen. It's left short, tipped out to Tavaninen. The Braves, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league. As Connor Linky's in for his first action tonight, another freshman. Yeah, doing a great job so far for the Braves. He's kind of manufacturing those second chance opportunities. Already have five offensive rebounds in this game so far. On the pick and roll to Linky, who lays it in. Thomas doing a very good job of facilitating for the Braves. Just able to dip, dip that down to Linky, who does exactly what he's supposed to do. Gets to the hoop and gets rewarded. High IQ play by both Thomas and Linky on that one. Strong left wing three is short. Thomas the rebound. And again, he's going to push ahead to East, who backs it out. Strong transition D by the Redbirds. Seven and a half to go. Braves down seven with the basketball. Nice find. And they get an open look for Tabanainen. Not your going point, down Matt, for him tonight, yeah, yeah. Good, great shots. He's been left alone, just not knocking him down so far tonight. Yeah, not his evening so far. 0 for 5 from the field, including 0 for 4 from 3. Maybe they tap it on, that's the guy you want shooting him, but so far, ISU is able to, bit, able to control the tempo. 21-14 ISU over Bradley. 14, 7, 17 to go in the half. Brian Beto with Matt McLean. Matt, for the first time this season, people not on the floor or working the game are actually in attendance. There's 50 
castless members that are in attendance tonight. So close family and close friends of these uh, players and coaches that could attend tonight. It's nice to hear someone else's voice, right? I yeah. mean, like a lot of times, like during free throws and stuff, we're like, okay, we got to be quiet, right? Because we're the only people in the building. I know. But we got like, we got 50 uh, friends and family in the stands right. tonight, so it's been nice. Trending in the right direction. And also, we got a big win, too. Speaking of things trending well, we got Paul Herzog in the house That tonight. is very true. His first, first and possible, well, it's going to be his only game because yeah. it's the last one, so... Oh, yeah, Paul Herzog back on the public address. Yeah, I've been there for the better part of four decades. He's in town calling, and it's good to hear his familiar voice. There he is on the uh, good golden pipes. Yeah, and Two, There's good sets of golden pipes on that side of the floor. <laughs> Not as much true. with us. you got Dave Snell up there, and you got Paul Herzog. Paul Herzog. You can tell he's been in Florida with that suntan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm jealous. Jealous, too. Eight-point lead for Illinois State. Strong, who's got five points. We highlighted in the open. Struggled a little bit, and Coach Moeller talked about this before missing some time due to an injury. He might not be 100%, but he's played very, very well coming back from that injury, which we alluded to earlier. Tavaninen, there's Mast. Dump down low, Linky, good high-low action, and the Braves convert. You said it exactly, Brian, the high-low action. Get the ball to this middle of the zone. Mass is able to kind of face up, triple threat in the middle of the paint, sees Linky, has his man sealed, beautiful lob over the top. Linky gets the contact, fights through it, scores it, gets a little bounce in. Been impressed with what Connor Linky has provided so far in limited minutes for the Braves tonight. Yeah, he's got four points, but that's a, a new career high. You're still with plenty of time to go in this one. And Linky does convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. A player that Brian Wardle really, really loves his uh, work ethic, his defensive intensity. Just a guy who has a lot of intangibles and a player who can potentially grow into a very, very, very good asset for the Braves. Played good defense on Moorchich, who threw it out of bounds. And it'll go back to the Braves, trailing by six. Again, if you're just joining us, Illinois State started red hot. Made their first three threes. They missed their last six. Bradley's hasn't been able to get it going from deep yet either, but they've gotten some looks. 11 to shoot, East on the pick and roll. Bounces into Mass, baby hook is down for Rink Mask, his first field goal of the night. You can kind of see Bradley working the one-two game right there, just a quick little you know, pick and roll there from Sean East, and Mast was able to seal off his man and get positioned on the little right-handed hook shot to go. Nice little draw up play there for the Braves. He's been the Braves' leading scorer over the last seven contests, nearly 12 points per game. As it's batted out to East, no numbers, but he's going to pull up from three, and he won't get the bounce, and Lorchic the rebound. Lorchic, one of the best rebounders in the league. In fact, he's fourth in the Valley in that category. Yeah, and he's, he's got a game with 15 rebounds under his belt against Missouri State this season. The guy like who the can, average. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Lorchic is one of those guys who can really get out there and get after it. His, uh, Hortridge is uh, going to be replaced here for by Jai. So after tonight, just two games remaining for both teams, and they'll take place next Friday and next Saturday. All Valley games to close out the season are that, just to give both all teams ample opportunities as McAdoo knocks down a three for the exact amount of time off between that and the start of March Madness, the exact amount of time for preparation. So Bradley will take on Drake. Illinois State will take on Northern Iowa to close out their year. This is the closest the Braves have been in quite some time, really since the opening tip. That one's knocked out of bounds. It'll reset to 20. They're gonna say it went off mass foot. As Hannah checks in for Linky, who gets a nice hand from his team and coaching staff for the minutes he provided. Yeah, four minutes so far for Connor Linky, two for two from the field, one for one from the free throw line, doing a really good job. And just active hands on the defensive end as well. He's earned some more playing time you'd have to expect in the second half. Really good take on the inside by Iman Washington. 
who had a double-double last Saturday, 11 points, 10 rebounds. Thomas hesitation dribble. Pivots, gives it to Hannah. Still plenty of time to shoot. Here comes the high ball screen from Mast. McAdoo now had it blocked away by Jai. Both these teams, excellent shot blocking teams as Jai knocks that one away. The Redbirds have it going the other way. Kick back out, corner three. Reeves is down. That's picture perfect of what ISU wants to try to do. Defensively, they're going to influence your shots. Jai, you see he starts that fast break. And then Reeves knocks down another three-pointer. He has been red hot so far here for, for the Redbirds. He's leading all scores with 11 points. His third three ball right there. Jai led the team in shot blocking a year ago. Averages a block and a half this year. Slithering between defenders. Had it blocked was Thomas. Now the Redbirds on a mini burst of 5-0. Back out to Strong. Guarded by Mass. And he turned it over. But Jai able to... Keep it alive for Illinois State. Shot clock did not reset. Left wing three for Washington is no good. Thomas is down. And on the floor, we hope he's all right. Took a shot to the mouth, holding his, holding his mouth, it looks like. And he'll have some time to recoup here as we head to a timeout with 3.27 to go. It's Illinois State leading Bradley 28 to 22. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Twenty-eight twenty-two, Illinois State by six. Brian Beto and Matt McLean with you. Get a look at the Bradley Huddle, who again has had to mix and match with, with different lineups. Uh, and it's given these young guys a, a lot of experience, which is really much needed. I mean, both these teams, the future of the, the respective programs with all the youth there and definitely some bright spots. We talked about Connor Linky. Rink Mass has been great as of late for, for Bradley as well. Kevin McAdoo just, just flashed in a three and both these teams trying to figure out the right combinations with just two and a half games left heading Certainly. into St. Louis. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so super important to, you know, get some momentum going to Arch Madness. And, I mean, I-74 rivalry, what a better way to right. do that, right? I mean, this is a, a night where you'd expect Carver Arena to be jam-packed in the normal year. You got, you know, fans coming over from normal. Like Coach Morris has been coming over for years from normal, I know. And um, you want a bunch of people here in Carver Arena, right? And you don't have it tonight, which is unfortunate, but these players are manufacturing their own energy and things of that nature. So, uh, honestly, just great that these two teams are playing, and uh, we, we got a couple games left here before we get down to St. Louis and see what these guys can do here in the last, you know, 23 minutes of this ball game. Bradley got to within 23-22, so five unanswered from Illinois State. Boyd... Could help on him. Reeves, the leading scorer in this ball game, comes up empty on a teardrop. They floated ahead to Tavaninen, back to East. As the Redbirds set up with their zone. Henry bounce pass nice finds pass. Mass and a great ball fake, and Jai's going to make him earn it at the stripe. Yeah, Deshaun Henry doing a great job of reading that weakness of that 2-3 zone right through the middle there. Bounce pass in between a couple of defenders. Rink Mass able to manufacture this trip to the free throw line with that shot fake. As you said, Brian, great job. Mass makes the first. Has an NBC Newcomer of the Week award under his belt just a few weeks back. Double double on Sunday, 15 points, 11 rebounds. And I mean, the coaching staff just raves about what he's been able to provide and his coachability and his maturity because it's so easy to forget he's a freshman. No doubt about it. Holds himself accountable is another word that they've, they've used to describe him. And he's adapted really well here in his first year on the court in yeah. game action for Brad. Absolutely. You mentioned on the court, obviously he missed last season with the knee injury with the red shirt, which is super valuable for him to get acquainted with the program and, you know, learn some of these guys. And he's really kind of stepped into a little bit of a leadership role as a, as a vocal leader is what coach Wardle told us. Braves get a stop here. Sean East, the sophomore. The Braves overload one side. They give to Hannah on the low block. Flips it out to Mass. Tavanine and Baltic. 
Back to Mass. He can hit it from there and done. Beautiful ball movement there by the Braves. Passing up multiple looks. Nice shot fake by Vile Tavanine and kick it over to his uh, his roommate, Rick Mast, able to knock down the three ball. Boy, good burst. Floater gets the bounce. Yeah, just blows right past the defender there. Great job there by Dedrick Boyd to create that little 10 foot jumper on the baseline. Get Junior, the bounce in. Junior out of Brownsville, Tennessee. Boyd, that's his first bucket of the ball game. East from the elbow, left it short. Washington the rebound. Washington an excellent rebounder for being just 6'5". I mentioned he had 10 last weekend. He's already got four here tonight. At length, he will probably tell you why. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's strong, there you see it again. He can fill it up quickly from behind the arc. Knocks down a three ball. He's got 10 points, joining Reeves in double figures who has 11. Mass tries a wing three, and that's good. Rink Mask is heating up. Another guy who can heat up in a hurry. Rink Mask, back-to-back -back three balls for the Braves. Boyd pulls up and gets another bounce. Man, he's living right tonight. That's the second time he's hit that front of the rim, and it's bounced in for him, and Boyd catching fire as well. Really smart, too. He reads the clock. He sees he's got a two-for-one opportunity to come down and get a quick shot, and the Redbirds looks like they're on track to have the last shot of the half. Henry, they swing it to Hannah. High post for Mass, squares up from 15. Too strong, Henry chases it down, floats it up, and no, but he'll shoot two. No friendly bounce on this end. <laughs> Dedrick Boyd's got it the other end figured out well, but Henry can't get that one to go in, but another great job of reading the, the offensive glass there by Deshaun Henry. Get another chance there. And you see, he's fired up. Deshaun Henry, happy to be out here playing tonight. He's got seven points. 75% foul shooter. He made his first and only trip so far this evening, and he makes the first. Slew of substitutions defensively for Bradley, Linky, McAdoo, and Thomas all in as Illinois State should have the final shot remaining here in the half. Kent will also check in. And don't want a Henry or East to pick up any quick fouls here. Yeah, at the smart end. substitution is ICU gets a chance here to extend their lead before halftime. Strong has it, and he's going to give it to Reeves. Here comes the high screen from Mahorchic. Strong hand in his face on Thomas. Step back three is just a little bit short. Nice defense by Thomas. And that's how the first half will end. An entertaining first half. Illinois State got out to a very fast start. Bradley closed the gap. They're within three at the halfway point. We'll step aside, take a time out. First half stats, highlights, and more. Brian Beto, Matt McLean is. We get a look at some first half highlights. And, you know, Illinois State, like we said, came out red hot. Deshaun Henry able to, to work the Braves back in to get him within to where they are in three right now. Yeah, ISU going to jump out that 8-2 start, and it was really right here by plays like this. The defense came first and led to offense. Josiah Strong with that strong finish on the slam, and you know, ISU with that great start, but Bradley really started to figure out that 2-3 zone that the Redbirds have been, have been running a little bit, and kind of scratched and clawed their way back by a triple drive in the seams and knocking down a few shots. As you see our first half stats, Brian. Yeah, I mean, what stands out? We were trying to pinpoint things during the break. Bradley out rebounding the birds. They have seven offensive rebounds. That's one, but it's outside field goal percentage too. But everything's pretty, pretty even. similar uh, yeah. outside of just these stats too, and which makes sense, like you said, because it's a three-point game, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the difference was in that first 12 minutes. We were looking at the turnover column and saying during a break, you know, Brad, they, they had six turnovers during that point. They took care of the ball the last eight minutes. They they clumped their way back into the game. Take care of the basketball. Bradley's going to have a good opportunity to come back and get this win here tonight. But if it's ISU standpoint, you're just looking and you're saying, hey, they come out here and keep disrupting them on the defensive end like we did that first, you know, 10, 12 minutes. That's the big key from here on out. 
And if you're Bradley, you, like you said, they were really attacking the zone, starting to, to get some really good looks, and some of those didn't even drop. Right. So uh, Rick Mask had a couple, but Tavaninen is 0-4 from three, and he's getting some great looks. So you figure that might uh, a change in the Braves' favor, and something that if you're if you're Bradley, I think might bode well here in the second half. But in my opinion, these first four minutes absolutely huge. The dictating the pace. Bradley really trying to turn the tables on the Redbirds. I hate to keep be alluding back to that last game, but again, Bradley was up 12 early on. Illinois State really reeled them back in quickly, overtook them, then got off to a hot start in the second half. Tonight, almost the opposite. Illinois State got out to an 11-point lead, 13-2. to Bradley reeled them in, and now the Braves trying to, to get out to that fast start and overtake the Redbirds. They have not let all game. No, they have not. And if you're Brian Wardle, you're using that first game from, from last month right now as a big example. Say, hey, guys, we're not even close to being out of the woods yet. We saw what ISU did to us in a, in a second half over in normal. So really kind of using that as some motivation. Come out here and put your foot on the gas and, you know, try to get your first lead of the night and take it home. But if you're the Redbirds right now, keep doing what you're doing and, you know, you got the lead right now, playing the way that you want. You've been able to control the tempo. If you're Dan Muller, you got to be pretty happy with what you've seen in the first half from the Redbirds. Looks like the same starters starting five for Illinois State. Bradley's got one change. Hannah to start the second half over Kent. So the Braves going a little bigger to start the second half. Nice cut there, yeah. Just got a hold of Mahorchich there as he was going in. And for that would have been an uh, easy layup from Mahorchich, so pretty good foul there. Yeah, that was a good foul. Like you said, that would have been an uncontested two and the slip from Mahorchich. Bob that ahead. A fresh 20, that's now down to 17. Reeves, who had 11 points in the first half. Washington knocks down. The mid-range jumper. Yeah, Washington's one of those guys for the Redbirds. He can really fill it up. Just a freshman. He's got already got a 30-point game in his uh, in his record book so far for this time with the ICU. Granted, that was that Greenville game where they broke so many program records with scoring, but still, you can see what he can do. Anna hit hard as he was trying to be pretty violent with the rim. And he'll you, shoot too. You know he can do that too. We've seen flashes of Darius Hanna, the Sports Center top ten dunks throughout this season. He can he's really got that flair in his game, be able to finish at the rim. He had violent thoughts on that one. Looking to get in the scoring column. He does have seven rebounds, which is one shy of a season and obviously a career high being a freshman. He makes the first free throw, so he is on the board. And early substitution, Boyd's gonna come in for Fleming. Boyd, a strong first half, six points off the bench. It was Fleming Jr.'s fourth foul. So yeah. he started and, in, and times in that beginning segment there for the Redbirds, he was really facilitating, knocking down a couple of mid-range jumpers, setting up his teammates. That's a big loss right now for the Redbirds. Yeah, I think he had three assists on the first four baskets of the game. Yeah, and he knocked down a couple jumpers. He really had his game kind of working. As you see Washington again, he can heat up in a hurry. Back to a five-point game. Spreading the floor as Mass pops out, gives the McAdoo free throw line extended on the left. Got different cutters working the middle of that zone, trying to get the defense to stretch out. As you see, it opens up a passing lane. Hannah's able to convert on that little one-on-one -on -one against Mahorchic. Really good find by Mass. Quickly the other way, Washington. Guarded by Hannah. Floyd has it, right wing Reeves. Hand in his face by Henry. Bounce pass on the pick and roll. Stripped away. Thrown back to the top. Here's Boyd now with it. Spins it, throws mm. it up. No, but he'll shoot two. Strong take there by Boyd. And check out the hustle by Dusan Mohorcic. He kind of loses it between two defenders down there. Dives on the floor. Rifles it out to Boyd. Creating the second chance opportunity. And Boyd uh, manufactures a trip to the free throw line. Both teams have been excellent from the stripe. A combined 16 of 17 for both sides. Illinois State a perfect six of six, including two of two from Boyd, make it three of three for the junior. 
Yeah, Boyd's got the rim thing figured out. He rimmed home two jumpers in the first half. Rims home that first free throw. He's getting the shooter's touch tonight. No rim needed that time as he swishes the second of two. Touch pass back to McAdoo. Mass top of the circle, gives to Tavaninen, back to Mass from the elbow. The touch from the big man is there. See again, it sounds like a, you know, a, a drumming it over and over again, but Bradley having a lot of success when they get the ball to the middle of that zone. It just kind of crumbles there defensively for the birds once they get the ball in the middle. Bradley going to keep attacking that way. Washington left side, nearly traveled with it, instead gives it to Boyd behind the back. Guarded by Tavanin and tough mm. deuce from Boyd, and he's feeling good right now. Yeah, really strong defense there by Felix Tavanin to contest and stay with him that whole time, but Boyd's got it working right now. Really strong jumper there. That offense is better than the defense on that one. Joins Reeves and Strong in double figures with 10. Tavanin and gets the high ball screen. Hesitation dribble, gets space, goes up and one. Yeah, the hezzy right there by Vile Tavanin and beats his man off the dribble. Thanks to that little stutter dribble. Gets the step on him. Nice job getting all the way to the rack for the old fashioned three point play opportunity. And a lot of fans, you know, cat or would typecast him as a shooter, right? But Brian Definitely. Moore called him a score. And and that's been evident as of recent. Uh, it came into tonight 17 of his last 22 from two-point range. And Brian, he's shooting 77% from two-point range this season. I mean, that is just, that is amazing. That's great shooting percentage along with being your team's top three-point shooter. And a lot of them have looked like that where he's run off the three-point line and able to get three points anyway, just the, the hard way. I guess the easy way for him, the way he's been able to score inside the arc this year. Mohorcic backing his way in on Mast. It's a fun matchup to watch. Washington back to Strong, cut off by Tavaninen, zips it over to Washington, mm. who goes up no, and the rebound to Tavaninen. Tavaninen to Henry, full speed ahead, yes. offensive foul. He got that really smart move there by Washington, just slid over. He saw Henry do this exact same play in the first half. Nobody stopped the ball, but Washington says, all right, I'll come over and stop the ball right under the hoop. Great IQ play there, Iman Washington. Yeah, you got to give him a ton of credit. That is not easy to do. You have the guy with the strength and speed of Henry. A linebacker, full yeah. speed coming at you. Able to step in front, take the charge. And Illinois State holding on to a two-point lead. They led by three at the half, if you're just joining us. Led by as many as 11. That came right at the beginning of the game. Boyd finally misses, but tracked down, however, by Sissoko, who lays it in. Yeah, Jai able to just keep that possession alive. Gets the tip out. Sissoko just kind of follows it up. Strong finish there, two-handed by Haruna Sissoko. First second chance points of the game for Illinois State. Sissoko did not play in the first contest between these two. Gets on the board here. East with the left-handed floater and hauled in by Jai. Ahead to Reeves. Reeves in the corner through the fingertips of Sissoko and back to Bradley. Who will possess out of the timeout, 15.56 to go. It's a good one. Bradley down four. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Brian Beto and Matt McLean with you. Illinois State leading Bradley 45 to 41. Again, not to, to overdo it, but I know driving down here tonight, I was super excited just for the opportunity to call this game. It's, it's always just list. so much fun <laughs> every year. And even without, you know, a full Carver Arena or full arena when they played in Bloomington Normal, it's it's still just a joy, and I feel privileged to, to, to be here on the call tonight, and uh, it's been a good one so far. 100%. I echo that statement, no doubt about it, and both these teams playing with a lot of intensity, and should be a fun one down the stretch here with it being this close. McAdoo open for three. Bradley, as we talked about, has been really good ATO. 
And they dial one up from three to get with him one once again. Cutting is Sissoko who answers at the other end. He's got four now. Yeah, so strong going to the hoop. He's got a, that big body. Is able to work his way to the hoop and knock it down. Link keeps that one alive, but nobody home, and Redford's pushing the tempo. Go look ahead to Boyd up in there. And just like that, Illinois State opens it back up to a five-point lead. Yep, Bradley got a sniff. They, they could smell the chance of the opportunity to take the lead guy out to one. ISU with two quick buckets. Great response. Henry drives in! Puts those two defenders go right through the two-handed clutch to Sean Henry. The Braves showing some zone. Yeah, we've seen Bradley do this from time to time, just kind of get some that length going as through the zone. Chai tries a three flat on that one, falls short. Ahead to Henry, corner Tavaninen. Instead drives in, shovels it to Linky, and he's fouled. Yeah, totally see what Tavaninen's trying to do there, drive, but wide open three. You don't want him shying away from his game, shoot that three-pointer, but doing a good job trying to get his teammates involved. You see he's kind of beating himself up over that one, but nonetheless, the Braves' possession continues here. Blue of substitutions as well. One's been at a good pace, particularly in the second half. Both these teams offensively at a high pace. Kent in the middle with the jumper. Yeah, that's money. Get him running in from the far side, right into the middle, free throw line jumper. Jason Kent will knock that down all day and again getting the ball to the middle of that zone. Bradley's had a lot of success doing that. Reeves, who got off to a monster start, relatively quiet as of late, strong. Gets in the air, out to Boyd for three. And McAdoo snatches it out of the air. Bradley can take the lead. McAdoo off the ball screen. Up, no, but he is fouled. Bradley looking potentially for basket interference, but nothing there. And McAdoo will shoot two and a chance to give Bradley their first lead of the night. Really like what I've been seeing from Kevin McAdoo this last stretch where he's came back, but really playing with a lot of aggressiveness, you know, attacking the hoop, shooting the jumper if he has it. But very impressed with what McAdoo's been able to do. And he came in and has been a combo guard, right? Like for sure. Spearhead a lot of the point guard duties as of late. And he's got eight points in this ball game. Two of three from three. And Bradley, I'm sure, really wants to get him going from three. He can. He has the ability. He, has he came yep. in here to shoot it. So it's good to see him knock down a couple of those. He does tie the game at 49. And you hear the limited Bradley fans trying to get their team riled up here a little bit. Yeah, refreshing for them to hear some fans in Carver Arena. They're kind of trying to build off that energy right now. Bradley with an opportunity here to get a stop and a score, take their first lead. Strong for three and a huge answer on the other end. Every time Bradley's got to within the slimmest of margins, Illinois State answers back and they do yet again It's Strong. Strong says not so fast, up to 13 points for him. He's been very impressive tonight. You know, at big moments, able to knock down a jumper and. Right there, that was another one of them. McAdoo tries to answer. Can't do it. Washington with those long arms secures the rebound, his sixth. Strong inside, had it knocked away, flipped ahead, but it goes back to Washington. And one. And one. Really strong move there. Antonio Thomas tries to slide under him. He gets there a little bit late. Washington will just kind of flip it up. Huge momentum swing there. If Mass is able to save that one, Bradley gets numbers going the other way, but instead, great job by ISU sticking with that play. Washington gets the bucket, as you see right here. A little flip it in off the glass. Washington now with eight points, six rebounds, three assists. Freshman out of Atlanta, 62% foul shooter. It's good. And He's Illinois sick. State, a perfect nine of nine from the line. Very impressive. Very impressive. That's been the Achilles heel very, at the beginning of the season. The Achilles heel for ISU was the free throw line. They were having some troubles, you know, connecting from there. So to come here uh, at your rival's home gym and shoot perfection almost from the free throw line thus far, really impressive. Mass wide open. He can shoot that three. 
Back-to-back three-point trips for the Redbirds after Bradley had tied it. Entry pass to Henry on the cutting. East is short. Knocked out of bounds. I believe it will stay with Bradley. It will. They're going to talk about it a little bit here. And they're going to change it. And it's going to go back to the Redbirds, who can now build on a six-point lead. They got out ahead to Strong. Opposite the screen gets by Kent. Opposite corner, there's Reeves. Washington tries a three. That's good. Huge shot of Mata Washington. The Redbirds on a 9-0 run here to take control. Dan Muller and the Birds fired up. And timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. Like you mentioned, that 9-0 run for Illinois State. We Bradley basketball looking for a response when we come back. Nino spurt by the Redbirds has given them a nine-point lead with 12.01 to go. Brian Beto, Matt McLean, Illinois State looking for a sweep in this rivalry that's been in the near term dominated by the Braves. But let's see how Bradley responds after three consecutive three-point trips. For Illinois State, a pair of threes sandwiched around an old-fashioned yeah. three-point play. And Iman Washington's been huge for the Redbirds, averaging under five a game. He's got 12 in this ball game, one of four Redbirds in double figures tonight. Yeah, the, 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 the depth of the scoring has been great. 13, 12, 12, 11, multiple guys going out there and finding their shot tonight. The Redbirds have their offense clicking on all cylinders. A lot of stagnant here by Bradley. A lot of guys standing around. Not much time here to manufacture a shot. They got four to shoot. McAdoo out to Mass. He's going to get it off. And it's in and out. Got a great look. And Fleming, who's in with four fouls, will walk it up for Illinois State. Fleming back nice door for Strong, who lays it in. Tremendous find. That's what Fleming brings, and that's why he's in the game, with, despite him having four fouls. Great vision there to flip that through the defense. Strong catches and shoots. ISU an impressive 11-0 run here. Mast. Top left wing now. They get it into McAdoo. Puts it up, back door for Henry. Power dribble goes oh. up, and that's a big bucket for Deshaun Henry to get it back to within single digits. It'll have one in the hopper after another timeout, 10.47 to go. Bradley trying to chip away down nine. Seven to go. Well, this ended an 11 0 run by Illinois State. Deshaun Henry. Power move to the basket, and Bradley really needed that. Yeah, a weight point. room move there by Deshaun Henry just to kind of stop the bleeding, per se. It was an 11 0 run there by ISU over the last three minutes. Henry able to get that score and just kind of, you know, hey, we're down nine, 10 47 to play. Chance to get make it an eight point game with this free throw. There's a lot of game left here for Bradley to kind of work their way back. The Braves are very, very solid. 12 of 14 from the line. That one's run down, I believe, by Henry, but he stepped on the sideline. The hustle, but it'll go back over to Illinois State. So the lead is nine for the Redbirds. Bradley's going to pick up some three-quarter court pressure here with the zone. Typically fall back into a little zone. ISU beats it easily, but Bradley's not trying to create any pressure there. Just kind of a different look. Now ISU's got to readjust and get into their offense with 17 on the shot clock. Yeah, try to milk some shot clock. Nobody's better in the country at milking the shot clock. Is a backdoor feed for Washington, and he lays it in. And you know why that was a set play? ISU was ready for that zone, and again, it's Fleming facilitating a perfect backdoor lob for the easy bucket. They went underneath the screen. The Braves with a second chance. 
Hannah just inside the arc with the jumper splashes one home. Always got to respect the man with the ball, and ISU just kind of defensively lacked off of Hannah there. Nobody on the 2-3 zone stepped up to match up with him, and he just knocks down the little 19-footer. Strong bounce pass in the corner. There's Washington. Reeves, corner now, Fleming, cut off by Henry. Well, Zips great pass it again. opposite corner. Washington's three is no good. And the Braves get a stop, trying to string together a pair of made field goals on back-to-back -back trips. Henry spins in, goes up, left it short, tipped out back to top the nine in. He's looking underneath on the high low to Henry, who spins well, again. I think man. he traveled, he did. Well, Horchich will check back in. I was trying to make this point earlier, Matt, that the Braves forced their opponent deeper into the shot clock than, than anyone. 19 and seconds into it. And Illinois State doesn't necessarily fit in with their, their style. They like to, to get it up and often. Mohorcic, opposite corner, three for Boyd is down. Tough shot right in front of the ISU bench. They love to see that. Dedrick Boyd having a big game off the Redbirds bench. 15 points. He has stepped up and provided in a big way. That's his first three, but he does have 15, like you said, Matt, on five of 10 shooting. That's and anticipated that one was Washington, and Washington hammers it home. The big time for and looking back at the defense on his way in, he throws it down with the one hand. ISU's lead is up to 14 out of nowhere. Stripped his McAdoo on the floor, jump ball. It will stay with Bradley on the alternating possession. Yeah, and the Redbirds have all the energy right now. They're playing with confidence. Their bench is up, standing up. They can tell that they're on the verge right now, busting this one wide open. And that comes from plays like this is where you get your energy. Iman Washington throwing it down. McAdoo comes up limping a bit and Thomas is gonna come in for him. Kent also in for Tavaninen. And this one was 49 to 49 not too long ago and the Redbirds have come out in a burst. Yeah, it's an 18-4 run over the last five minutes here by ISU. Really taking control of this one. Ken contested three, and he gets the bounce. That must be the end with the friendly bounce. Ken, <laughs> Ken get this, gets this one to go. Much needed three-pointer for the Braves to kind of stop this run that ISU is going on, but it's got to start for Bradley on this defensive end, getting some stops if they want to call their way back into this one. Mohorcic backing his way in, kicks it out, left wing three, it's good yeah. by Boyd, and I, Illinois State is just feeling it right now. Yeah, Mohorcic is such a good passer of the ball down there in the post. He feels the double team coming, skip, extra pass, open three. ISU's really got their offense working well, passing up good shots for great shots. Kent, not this time, knocked out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Redbirds out of the timeout. Illinois State in control here in Peoria, 14. Seventy to fifty-six, Illinois State on top of Bradley, Brian Beto, and, and Matt McLean, and, and Matt the Redbirds. Uh, you could tell when they when they get going, they're feeling it. They have all the confidence in the world, and their offense is clicking. And it's been doing so over the last five minutes or so. Absolutely, defensively, they got it working. Bradley's offense has kind of become stagnant, and the Redbirds are controlling that. And on the other end of the floor, my goodness, their offense has caught fire. 26 field goals made tonight for the Redbirds. 15 have been come through assists. So the Redbirds sharing the ball. That was one of our keys at the top of the show. Sharing is caring. ISU, when they are good, they are passing up good shots for great shots. Tonight they have been doing that consistently. It's been Howard Fleming facilitating, Dedrick Boyd, Josiah Strong. These guys have been sharing the ball. Mohorchich, a couple great feeds out of the post. Really coming out here and controlling the tempo. So Strong will walk it up. 
Braves needing to stop. Underneath, oh. and Mass goes down hard. Got caught in the air. Hope he's all right. It's one of those you just lay there for a second and make sure everything feels all right. And Rink Mass grabbing his lower back a little bit. That's going to be a stiff one. I think he's calling. And there's Linky's going to check in for him. Mass is shaking up. Talked about some of the players not available for Bradley tonight, but we haven't mentioned Ari Boya, who's still out too, and what he provides on the defensive interior and the interior in, in general. But unavailable tonight, so a lot of minutes uh, to go around in the front court. We've seen a lot from, from Linky and Hannah tonight. Yeah, certainly Boya was one of those guys in the non-conference schedule who was a really big part of Bradley's identity in terms of defense and, you know, their starting center. And he's missed all 15 games to make it 16 now in the Valley season. He's been a big loss for the Braves down low. Henry drives in, kicks it to Tavanon and gliding to his right and a big three from Tavanon in his first three of the game. Absolutely going to need more of those from Tavanon and down the stretch three ball. Good to see him make those. He's got six points. Riley led by Henry with 13. Mast has 12. Boyd leading all scores with 18. Ten to shoot. The Redbirds milking this clock a little bit, doing a lot of passing, trying to facilitate, get their shot as East plays the passing lane. You got a two on three. Active hands by East. That's got to be a block, right? No. Nope. Wow. Wow. He gets the call. Boyd slides over. And you know what? Sometimes it's just putting the refs to the test. You know, Boyd comes over, slides, and he gets the call going his way. And foul's going to be called on Thomas. So the Redbirds will bring it back up. Here's Fleming with five assists in the game. He's been limited to just 15 minutes due to foul trouble. He's got four. Mohorcic in the low post. Skips it out. Strong for three is good. Yeah, too easy. Strong's got to go in tonight. Mohorcic just flips it over to him, and Strong rises up. What a game he's having. His fourth three-pointer of the night. Henry underneath throws it down. He's got to start on defense here. Bradley wants a chance here. That they got to really lock in this last four, five minutes, and really, uh, you know, just control what they can control on the defensive end. Is you see Mohorchich slip that screen. He's got another one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He can score this, and he does score it. Posting up on Linky and a timeout taken by Illinois State as the lead is stretched back out to 14 for Mahorchich. He's got four points, two of two shooting. They haven't needed him offensively no. due to the strong perimeter play from the guards. And now Illinois State trying to close out Bradley. And we've seen them with these offensive outbursts this year. They scored 80 Last weekend at Southern Illinois as well. 177 against Greenville. <laughs> that was a little bit of an exhibition there for them <laughs> offensively, but I mean, they, and a win against Chicago State, they had 91. I mean, this is a team that can fill it up when on their nights when they're shooting the ball well. And I mean, this is one of those nights, ISU tonight, 56% from the field, nine for nine from the free throw line. You're gonna win a lot of games if you're shooting at that clip and their defense has been pretty dang good as well. And Bradley, a team that's quite frankly difficult to score on, came in 39th nationally in field goal percentage defense, second in the Valley in that category, just 0.4% behind Loyola. They've led in that category in the league the last three years. And you gotta credit Illinois State for, for what they've been able to do offensively. Even with a, a bunch of I'll say new faces, but guys getting a lot more minutes than maybe they're accustomed to in the white uniforms tonight. It looks like uh, Jason Kent was trying to come into the game, and they're saying, no, he can't come in now, so take a seat. But 
Yeah, and just in terms of this last five minutes, Bradley's going to have to come down here and, and really push the tempo and try to I mean, just to get up to 75 points, let alone have a chance to, to get back in this one. They're going to have to start scoring in bunches. Top of nine in, pump fakes, gets an open three. It's too strong, and the rebound to Henry. Back out to Hannah McAdoo. He'll try his luck at a three. That one's short, and the rebound to Washington. Fleming slowly walks it up. There's Mahorchich looking back door, but East was ready for it. Instead, hands off to Strong on the give and go to Mahorchich. Needles his way in, nearly got the drop. I think it hit the top anyway, yeah, but he'll shoot top. two. Yeah, really good floor awareness. The one two game there by Strong and Mahorchich, the pick and roll. Strong is able to split the defense. Mahorchich coming down off the roll. Great pass. Mahorchich splits the defense again as he gets fouled. Nice job there. So Mahorchic, just 46% from the line. That's Illinois State's first miss from the stripe tonight. Mahorchic is one of those guys who, a junior college product, a D2 product, he's kind of bounced around from place to place. And, you know, maybe he's found a home now at ISU. He's been very impressive in his first year, his junior year with the Redbirds. The guy does a little bit of everything. We've seen him. He's got great vision on the block there. When he catches, he can finish. He's a great rebounder. He's kind of the heart and soul of that team in terms of energy and in in, from down low than the big men. East from the elbow is short. Fleming the board. Looking ahead, gives to Reeves. Behind the back, step back three. Tipped in, however, by Jai. Yeah, Jai's limited minutes that he's played. He has just been a force almost on every play. He either gets a hand on a ball or he's able to keep a possession alive, and he does it again there. Violent slam by Hannah on the other end on the feet from Tavaninen. And Dan Muller telling his guys, all right, let's come down here. Let's run some clock. Let's get a good look. Up 15 here with under four to play. No reason to rush. Green and roll, Reeves, active hands by Kent, forces the turnover. East to walk it up in transition, Tavaninen, back to East. McAdoo, open three from the corner is down. That's exactly what Bradley needs. They need stops and they need buckets and they get a big swing there. ISU trying to run some clock. Kent played the passing lane, set up that opportunity as McAdoo knocks down a three. It's a 12-point game with three minutes to go. Crazier things have happened. Bradley's got to keep their head on swivel defensively here. They switch, and Hannah's on Washington. Strong, one-handed pass to Fleming. Behind the back, goes by East, floats one up and score. Really, really tough move there by Fleming. Just goes one-on-one, -on -one, beats his man, able to flip it up and in. Hannah hands it back on the give and go to East. Good recovery by Illinois State. Spinning in as East, underhand, flips Ooh. it up and then rolls in. Tough move there by Sean East, able to get that one to go. He's up to five points, got his number. And again though, Bradley's gonna need to get some stops here, Brian. Yeah, really the key, I mean, offensively, they have 16 assists on 24, makes 44%. Just Illinois State really shooting it well and Getting a ton of good looks. Blocking foul is called as Tavanine tried to step in front of Strong, but it'll send Strong to the line when we come back. Two minutes flat to go, Illinois State trying to, to finish off the Braves here at Peoria. Back to wrap it up in Peoria and through it all tonight, the player of the game is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. And for Bradley, it's Deshaun Henry. It's been a, a bright spot for the Braves. Now. Yeah, absolutely. Henry uh, makes it uh, able to facilitate a little bit, get a couple dunks and attacking the hoop with uh, great success for most of the night, Deshaun Henry. And that's for the, the home team on Illinois State side. You have a few options to, to certainly choose from. 
Strong and Boyd, both with 18. Washington's had a monster second half with 16. Reeves got the Redbirds out of the gate strong. He's got 11. No doubt. And he makes the first free throw, make it 12 for the sophomore out of Simeon High School. It's not a bad program. Not a, they've, they've been to Carver Arena a few, a few times. times. <laughs> They're ranked number one, I saw, on one poll to start the high school basketball season as well. Shockingly. Shockingly, yeah. Pretty decent program they have there. I'm going to give my hat tip game ball to Howard Fleming Jr. too as well. I've raved yeah. about him all night, been able to share the ball and run the offense for the Redbirds. Mcadoo deep three is in oh, and out. Halfway. It's kind of been that night sums for the Braves. Sums it up, doesn't it? Absolutely, yep. I give all the credit to ISU. Though. They've came out and they, they played the way they wanted. They controlled the tempo and They've had the majority of the energy tonight. Redbirds really brought this game to the Braves. Yeah, when the Braves, it's, it's an arbitrary number, but when the Braves get to 65 points, they're nearly unbeatable. Maybe not nearly unbeatable. I mean, they win a high majority of the time. I say they're 10-3. and three. When they score at least 65, that just shows you a couple of things. A, how good Bradley's been defensively this year, but B, how good Illinois State's been offensively tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. That number is magic for them when they're under that 65 number. They're 1 in 10, so that tells you how important it is to get there, but just not much you can do when a team comes out like ISU and they shoot 57% from the field and you know, really just able to kind of control the tempo throughout. There's times that Bradley, I mean, you know, first 30 minutes, Bradley kept it close. They were able to, you know, have their runs and make their answers, but the Redbirds are just able to, to outlast the Braves so far. Yeah, that big turning point, it was Braves came all the way back and exuded a ton of energy to tie it at 49. Yep. And three consecutive possessions, ISU put up a three spot, a three, a three-point play, and then another three. And Braves just have been unable to, to fight back ever since. And the Redbirds will inbound. Jai. Good defense by Bradley. Thrown right into the hands of Tavanine and right before the shot clock went off. Ahead to a streaking Thomas who goes up. He's challenged at the rim and he'll shoot two. Yeah, this is exactly what you want if you're Bradley. An opportunity to put some points on the board with the clock stop. And it's a 14 point game here. I mean, we've seen some crazy finishes in this league over the years. So nothing's out of the, out of the question here. You got to keep playing. Both teams here. This game's not over. Yeah, the Braves, you know, want to extend the game. Outside of tonight, the Illinois State's been excellent from the line, 12 of 13. That's, like you said earlier, been an Achilles heel for the Redbirds. So let's see if the Braves can score, extend the game. There's Thomas. It's one of two. And a foul, and it's going to send... Washington to the line. That's the ninth team foul on Bradley, so still one and one. And Washington is one of one there tonight. 62% in the year. And just a schmink better on the season for the entire Redwood program. 63% is what they shoot from the charity stripe. So tonight to be 12 for 13 with this one in the hopper just uh, this shows you how well they got it going. And he makes the first. Again, Illinois State, both teams are going to finish at home next Friday. So not tomorrow, but next Friday, Illinois State will host Northern Iowa. And Bradley will host Drake to close out their respective Valley Slates on Friday and Saturday, I should say. Kent just inside the arc. The pull-up jumper is no good. And... The rebound goes to Fleming, zips it ahead to Washington, and he's fouled. Drake fresh off of that thrilling overtime win and a series split against Loyola, and they really needed that one for everyone's hoping for the automatic bid, obviously, right. in St. Yeah. Louis, but that really would have diminished a lot of their LR chances. Of course, if that's what we hear anyway. What a great uh, advertisement for the league. You know, that last series last week in between Loyola and Drake, obviously Loyola with the big win in game one, but Drake able to, you know, kind of scratch back in game number two. And I mean, you're watching that and that is two NCAA tournament teams. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Those are two NCAA caliber teams, teams that can potentially win games in the big dance. When you see those two programs playing each other and, 
And the Valley's strong this year, so it'd be great to see him become a, a multiple bid league once again. And just the way this year's gone, you would be surprised to see some crazy things happen. <laughs> Hey, don't ask Bradley about that. They know all about crazy the last yeah. two years. They, they've put together some great stretches in that first weekend of March and able to to win, you know, back-to-back -back Missouri Valley Tournament Championships and off it, of uh, one weekend of great basketball. That's it's, all it takes. It's been a challenge, for, uh, it's a challenge for Bradley this year because, I mean, every year over the last, you know, five years, they've played their best. Even when they weren't towards the top of the league, they were playing their best basketball. As we got into February, as that shot is knocked in. Jaden Johnson, Johnson with the bucket. And Kent slams it in for a bucket. But at the February and out with the Braves with missing a lot of folks and struggling here tonight. Let's see what they can yeah. they can turn it around in a, in a shorter sample and play well next weekend at home against a very good Drake team. But Illinois State fired up, as they should be, as they come into to Peoria and Carver Arena and they get the, the series sweep. They win tonight by a score of 88 to, to 71. And, and Matt, uh, you know, we knew the Redbirds were, were capable of putting up some big offensive numbers. We've seen it at spurts, and tonight was one of those nights for them. And ISU gets to celebrate in Carver Arena. They sweep the series. ISU comes out. Look at that number, 56.6% from the field, 40% from three. I mean, they ended up out-rebounding the Braves, which hasn't happened much. Only seven turnovers on the night, and, you know, they get some big performances from guys off the bench. Boys scores 18 off the bench. Washington gets 20. Strong gets 20. Reeves 13. You know, quite frankly, Brian, ISU controlled the tempo all night, and uh, they really brought it to the Braves, who didn't have an answer in that final 10 minutes of the ballgame. You know, you hate to speculate, but it is certainly possible that these two teams could play again. They could. A couple weekends from now in, in St. Louis. But until then, Illinois State will enjoy it. They get the win uh, over Bradley tonight. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast. That's going to wrap it up here for from Carver Arena for my partner, Matt McLean, and our entire production crew at Chess Tech, who always does just a magnificent. Good job. I'm Brian Vito. The final here from Peoria, Illinois State Redbirds 88, the Bradley Braves 71. You've been watching the Valley. Yeah.